friends. Um, so there was a Nintendo Direct a few days ago, and they released, you know, announcements for a bunch of new games. They also released some announcements for some games that they're remaking or reimagining. And I wanted to go through and look at some of the newer games that they have coming out and potentially discuss story elements for them that we may see or, you know, predict what might happen in the game with you guys. Um, so yeah, let's go through and see if we can figure out some of the stories that are going to be taking place. Uh, the first one to start with is obviously the new Mario Luigi game, Brothership. And like, the first time, you know, they, they were really hiding the title for this um, until like the very end. And whenever they finally announced it, a thought occurred to me. And that thought was, are the Koopalings going to be in this game? Because it's Brothership, the Koopalings are all Bowser's adopted children, so they are technically the brothers and sisters of Bowser Jr. And Bowser Jr. has been in one of the uh, other Mario Luigi games, so it's distinctly possible that, you know, it's not just Mario and Luigi going on this adventure. It could also be, you know, Bowser Jr. and Bowser trying to, you know, find the Koopalings because something's happened to them. Um, that's kind of what I see happening in this game, so it's going to be really fun, I feel, to see if, you know, Bowser actually is, like, one of the good guys in this instead of just, you know, a bad guy. Like, he's obviously, you know, gonna attack Mario and Luigi because, you know, they're, they're, they they always cause him problems, just ask him. Um, but I can foresee that, you know, part of, like, the reason why he's there is that his children ran off and he's like, I gotta find my kids. I don't know where my kids went. I gotta find them. All right, so then the next one, uh, not that one, Fairy Tale 2. I, I, so this Neo Dimension one from the creators of Final Fantasy, um, it has a lot of like android robotic sort of feels to me. So I'm kind of curious if it's going to have um, like a lot of feelings of, you know, what makes someone human? Is it, you know, the way they behave, the way that they act? So I wonder if it's going to have a lot of like themes of what defines humanity in it. Uh, not that one. Let's see. This one. Mio. So I feel like with this game, the whole plot of it is that you are basically the AI that was generated by all of the people on this ship to basically kind of like house their memories. It, it's basically like a, a, I guess you could say it, YouTube. It's it's YouTube in a physical form, you know, going through these ships to, you know, try and, you know, preserve the memories of the humans that, you know, probably were once on the ship and now aren't. That would be my guess, um, what this story is going to play out as, because it seems like it's a lot of robots, but there are things here that seem to suggest that it was built by people for people initially. So that will be interesting to see how that works, if it's, you know, lost memories, basically. No. Okay, so this one, I'm a little surprised that, you know, it probably wasn't done sooner. There's another one in here that I think probably should have been done sooner than what it is. Um, but yeah, no, it just, it feels like the Hello Kitty people were like, hey, this Animal Crossing thing really did good for us. I wonder if we can, you know, make our own little island and change it up and make it cute. Uh, let's see, not that one. I'm not really a big sports person among us. Uh, okay, so this one. This one gave me a lot of like, uh, the Greek hero Cadmus feels. Uh, particularly, let me find the scene for you in here. Uh, let's see. Where was it? Oh, I might have passed it up already. That's fine. Here it is. This is the scene where you are literally planting 
animals and then harvesting them and like using them to battle like that in the story of Cadmus he planted some dragon teeth that grew into soldiers so like the like whenever I saw that I was like I feel like I know that story like that feels like a very th like I've seen that theme before of you know planting things and getting soldiers out of it um and so I had to Google which uh, story it was, and it's the story of Cadmus. So I wonder what other, like, Greek story elements might be in there, or, like, just in general other mythology elements that it's going to pull from that have to do with, you know, planting things and having them go through and change into, like, creatures or monsters or something. Let's see, Dragon Quest, that's a remake. Funko Fusion, that seems like a, uh... What's the uh, word I'm looking for? A um, Fortnite. That's a remake. I like that game. Um, I have no idea about that at all. It seems very Animal Crossing like too. Uh, Metal Slug Attack. Uh, again, not a hundred percent sure. I feel like that's a remake. Like I feel like I've heard of a game called that before, but I don't know what that is. That's getting a second game, and that just seems like someone's headache. Uh, not me, because I don't do well with, oh my god, I killed my people. Um, so th that's a, I, I really do like Link to the Past. I really do like Link to the Past. And we might play it for, uh, for reasons that will be coming up shortly. Um, in for mature stuff. So this, the Phantom Brave game, I, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it. Like, it feels almost like a um have you ever heard of the show shaman king it feels almost like that to me i could be wrong but that was just kind of the vibes i was getting from it um since you could pull like spirits out of things or have spirits manifest at um by taking like an object over to manifest through it um so yeah, that, that, that's the kind of vibes that it gave me was like, you know, you're, you're, or there's like a D&D &D class called, um, oh, I don't remember what it was called, but it was basically like you allow different entities to take over your body and, uh, depending upon which entities you had like discovered or allowed to take over your body, it would give you like different benefits. Like there was one for like, t if you wanted to be a tank player, there was one for if you wanted to be a healer. There was just all kinds of different abilities that you could do that way. Super Mario Jamboree. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this is the one that I'm super excited for, if you don't already know me. Um, so with this game, the map, whenever we saw like Zelda walking in it, that to me feels very much like it is a Link to the Past map. It gives me very strong Link to the Past vibes. So, and if you look at the timeline, which a lot of people either hate it or love it, um, I don't really care. Um, so if you looked at the like timeline, uh, the art style that they used for this was Link's Awakening, and Link's Awakening is supposed to take place after um, A Link to the Past, and it's supposed to be like the same Link. So the Link from A Link to the Past is the Link from Link's Awakening, and theoretically also the same Link from the Oracle games, but they haven't done anything with the Oracle games. Okay, so I, I, I love this fairy design for one simple fact of it reminds me of a Korok and it suggests that, you know, the fairies live in like the Korok woods, Lost Woods, that whole area. Um, so I, I, I just kind of hope that, you know, th they continue to call the like Koroks little fairies because I think it's cute or, you know, in uh, Ocarina of Time, like, that seemed to be where the fairies lived. Yes, you could find them in other areas, but, like, the Lost Woods and the Korok Forest were just crawling with fairies. Um, so, yeah, no, I look I look forward to this game. Um, I'm kinda half expecting that 
Like, it seemed to suggest that, you know, Ganon wasn't the actual bad guy for this game. I'm expecting there to be something inhabiting the sphere that's created all of the, like, rifts in reality. I am half expecting there's some sort of entity in that, like, uh, Votni was trapped in the Four Swords. Um, I'm half expecting something like that to be kind of like the story. And, um... It'll be interesting to see if you can actually go into those other worlds, like those rifts into another world, because in A Link to the Past, there was like a dark realm that you could go to. So it'll be interesting to see if they like continue to use like the dark realm. Um, I don't want to say ability, but just like have it be another place where you can hang out at or explore. Um, because that would be really nice, and it'll be interesting to see how many dungeons they have, because a lot of the the, the Link to the Past games had a lot of dungeons. Pants. Uh, that one. Stray. Okay, so Stray is a little behind the curve, but it's super cute and adorable, and I actually played it, so if you want to, you know... Just see if the game is something that you'd actually be interested in playing. I do have a playlist of my playthrough through Stray. Um, I kind of cry a lot because, again, I don't have a whole lot of skill and dying is a thing. And it makes me very upset whenever the cat dies. Uh, so, yeah, that uh, they're a little behind on the curve, but I am still happy to see that it's finally making its way to the Switch. Because uh, I know there are some people that only have a Switch and therefore probably never had a chance to play this game other than through the Switch. Um, and I think it's cute and adorable and it's a cat. You get to play as a cat and I'm a sucker for cats if you didn't already know this. And you know, seeing me talk baby talk to my uh, three cats. Let's see. Okay, this is the other one that I was like, why hasn't this been done before this point? I imagine it was just because um, talking to the Tolkien estate probably took a while to get like the actual rights for this. But between like Animal Crossing, the Harvest Moon, Story of Season games, and like all of those games, I'm surprised this took this long for it to come out. Because <laughs> there have been other Lord of the Ring games, but they've all been like the combat ones. So that that's a nice change of pace. I am happy to see that one. All right, not that guy. Uh, this one? <laughs> this one looks interesting because I feel like it's an alien invasion sort of thing. It it doesn't feel like a the spirit world is invading thing. It could be spirits instead of, you know, aliens. But I just feel more like alien vibes and spirit vibes from this. But I could be wrong. It'll, I mean, that thing is a mascot looks like a ghost so maybe it is more spirits than actual you know uh aliens it just it just gave me alien vibes there's so much tech stuff going on here but maybe it's a fusion of both spiritual and like advanced technology and it it seems to be a very similar style of play to um Fire Emblem, so if you like that game, you'll probably like this one. Um, I'm not a great strategy person, so I... Tr <laughs> like, there's some strategy involved in Zelda, yes. Uh, but you can also just brute force your way through it if you have enough health items. <laughs> That's usually my style of play, not gonna lie. Um, Romance Saga, uh, apparently that's another remake. That'll be interesting, I'm sure. Uh, and then Metroid Prime 4. Of course. Um, so, there was one called The Other M, where, if I remember the story of that one correctly, they had gone through and, like, fused Metroid DNA with human DNA and made, like, a human mother brain, if I remember correctly, that story. And... I could be totally wrong, but if they did it once, there's no reason to believe that they wouldn't do it again. Or maybe, you know, find another creature to, you know, meld human DNA and um, creature DNA with. Alien morphology, space pirates. Yeah, like the, the you know, 
take the space pirates and make a human space pirate. So then that way, you know, maybe you can convince the space pirates to stop attacking you. It's, it's not terrible logic to, you know, create a hybrid in the hopes of, you know, bringing peace between, you know, yourself and another creature type. Um, but with the Metroids following that thing, I feel like that is another M. Um, no, I don't, I don't know if it's going to be a twin. I don't know if it's going to be just another one that they made. Um, it could be that they decided to do, you know, space pirates, Metroids, and human genome and create something completely different. Um, I mean, I know it looks kind of like a robot, but Samus kind of looks like a robot, unless you know what she is. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm half expecting that to be the story for that is, you know, you're having to deal with a terrible hybrid that someone thought that that was going to be a good plan for. Um, so yeah, those are my different story predictions for, you know, the games that are new coming out for, uh, the Nintendo system within the next year or two. Um, like I'm, sh I would not be surprised if some of the remakes and retellings that they're doing, they do change them up a little bit. But I don't, I don't know. They didn't say that there would be new content for some of them. So it'll be interesting to see if those are just going to be little surprises. But yeah, that's my thoughts on what stories we might see, you know, play out in the future. And I hope you all, you know, let me know if you think I'm completely off on, you know, any of these story predictions. Because, well, you know, it, it's kind of fun to speculate, you know, where, where a story is going to go. And I hope you all have a great day. I love you. Be safe. Bye.